Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today's episode is going to be an update to my video all about the possible closure of my farmer's market, the La Mesa Farmer's Market here in San Diego. So if you're a La Mesa resident, I hope that watching this short video will help inform you on some of the different uh, issues going on with the market. And if you're one of my viewers on YouTube, I hope that you'll learn a little bit more about farmers markets from an expert who's been running markets for over 12 years. Um, and just some of, the, some of the issues that go on when you're running a market on public street and you have to deal with politicians. Um, if you are a La Mesa resident, please check out the video description below. I have a bunch of different links to the different council members information. Um, please call them, email them, and the most important thing that you can do is show up for that council meeting on July 23rd at 6 p.m. at the La Mesa, uh, near the police station at the Civic Center there. Um, and I'll have all the information so you can find it. So please enjoy this video uh, where I interview Brian Beavers. Hi, welcome to the Farmer's Market in La Mesa. My name is Brian and I'm the market manager here. And uh, lately we've been dealing with a lot of different opinions about what's going on with the market and uh, the overall success of the market. Um, and we're trying to uh, do a video series here that will allow us to communicate some of the just pure facts. My goal here is to be um, factual and just present what's going on. Um, this is not a rant or a rave, it's simply just presenting what's going on with the market. And then hopefully, in the end, you can make an educated decision on how you feel about it. So down this way is um, 4th Avenue, it, it ends at 4th Avenue, and it starts at Palm. Since we've moved the market to uh, La Mesa Boulevard, um, we have doubled the amount of vendors, and that's from about uh, 22 to about 56 or so. Then also what has happened over the course of the year, we have seen that the gross sales overall has been the, ma the most that the market in its history, 26 years, has ever made. Um, this is important to note because what that represents is that this market is growing every day and it's getting more popular and more people are coming out and, um, and that's an important thing for this boulevard. We're right now looking at, uh, this is uh, 4th Street, this is the end of the market on, on the east side of the market. Um, and uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna kind of just walk down the market and kind of talk about some of the things. So to my left, there's Surfrider Pizza. That's a new restaurant. And uh, these guys are, are packed during the market day. And we're gonna see a couple other restaurants as we go through here as well that are also packed. And one of the things that has, has not been mentioned often in, in this whole transition of the market is the fact that when the market moved here, approximately at the same time, there were at least three new restaurants, I think maybe even four new restaurants that came in at the same time. And so when other restaurants are, are kind of putting all the, the onerous on, on the market is why they might not be doing well, I, I think there might be a little, um, a little inaccuracy there because really the times that these restaurants have been complaining that they're not getting business, these other ones have been booming. So people are here and they're choosing different places to eat. That's the fact. And we're gonna walk over to curbside as well and we're gonna see that there's, there's a lot of people out there at curbside as well. One of the most important things that I want to convey to other people and to people who aren't really familiar with farmer's markets is that a farmer's market is not as successful and sometimes not successful at all if the businesses that are around it are not successful. It's, it's real important to note that, that when other people succeed, and that includes, and especially includes the brick and mortars, the farmer's market su succeeds as well. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, my management team really wants these brick and mortars to succeed. It's, it's important to us. Um, we wouldn't want it any other way. And so what we have done is, is we have, from the very get-go, in public meetings we've announced this, and we have offered to any business that's within the footprint of the market. Um, and we would even open that up to businesses that are just outside the footprint as well. 
Um, we've offered them free booths to promote their, their goods and promote what they do in their brick and mortar stores. We've offered them coupon placement. We've offered them uh, social media placement. We've offered them, um, uh, you know, uh, sandwich board placement in, in the middle of the market. Um, and we're open to other collaborative ideas. And since I've done that, since, for one year now, since the market's been here, I have had three businesses actually take me up on that offer. And, and unfortunately, none of the businesses that, have are, that are opposed to the market have taken me up or contacted me about trying to uh, make something happen like that. And we're more than willing to do it. And we, we've expressed that in multiple different meetings and, and, uh, and it's, it's public knowledge. And so we're still offering that. That's still an offer. If businesses that are struggling, they want to tap into the thousands of people that come through this market every Friday, talk to us because we've done this for a long time. We kind of know what works and we would like to help you bring in these new people in your business. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for this episode of Nature's Always Right. I hope this cleared up some questions that you may have had if you're a La Mesa resident or if you're just watching um, as one of my viewers. I hope uh, you learned a little bit more about farmers markets and a lot of the politics that goes on in running these, especially on public streets.